Recently, I did a presentation where I compared Federal XM193 556 NATO with a 55 grain full metal jacket spear point projectile to IMI M193 556 NATO with a 55 grain full metal jacket spear point projectile to IMI 223 Remington with a 55 grain full metal jacket spear point projectile. Well, today I'm going to compare a couple of other types of 556 NATO ammunition. This is IMI Systems 556 NATO with a 77 grain jacketed boat tail hollow point, and this is IMI Systems 556 NATO M855 with a green tip 62 grain steel core penetrator projectile. Now, sometimes when I do ammunition comparisons, people will ask me, why did I do these certain types of ammunition? And the answer is because viewers sent it to me and asked me to. Now, today's presentation is going to come with a caveat. Normally, when I compare types of ammunition, I will shoot them alongside comparable ammunitions and see how they stack up. And that is what we'll do today. But given the current situation of ammunition availability, or lack thereof, the varieties of ammunitions I'm going to be able to use is going to be a little bit limited. But we'll see what we can do. And we're going to start with some tedious chronographing. So I have the chronograph set up at 7 yards, and I have my Colt AR-15A2 with a 20-inch barrel and a 1 in 7 rifling twist loaded with our IMI 556 NATO 77 grain projectile. Let's see what kind of velocities I get. Twenty six ninety four. Twenty six sixty nine. Twenty six sixty eight. Twenty six eighty five. And twenty six eighty two. Let's see how that compares to some other ammunitions. Now let's try Remington Premier Match 223 Remington 77 grain boat tail hollow point. 2673. 2650. 2651. 2633 and 2667. Let's try another type of ammo. And now I've got Hornady 223 Remington 75 grain boat tail hollow point. Two grains difference in projectile weight. I think we can live with that. 2597. 2565 2631 2586 2592 and 2625 Let's try some other types of ammo. Now let's try our IMI systems 556 NATO M855 62 grain steel core penetrator. 2992. 30-83. 30-22. 30-89. 3022 and 3021. Let's try another type of 62 grain projectile. Unfortunately, the only other type of 62 grain steel core penetrator ammunition I have is PMC. But let's give it a try. 2994. 3000 Four. Twenty nine seventy three. Twenty nine eighty one. Thirty twelve. 
3017. And 3021. Let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. And the results I got were, with our 62 grain projectiles, with the IMI 62 grain we got a mean velocity of 3,038 feet per second. With the PMC 62 grain, 3,000 feet per second. That's 38 feet per second less within the variation of one round to the next and not enough difference to make a difference. When we go to our heavier projectiles, we would expect to see lower velocities and that's what we got. With the IMI 77 grain, we got a mean velocity of 2679. With the Remington 77 grain, we got 2654, 25 feet per second less. Again, within the variation of one round to the next and not enough difference to make a difference. But with our Hornady ammunition, which is a 75 grain projectile, which is two grains less, we got a velocity of 2599. That's 80 feet per second less than the IMI ammunition, which some people might consider a marginal difference. But what we're really seeing here is that our IMI ammunitions are giving us slightly more velocity than the others are. Is it enough difference to make a difference? You be the judge. But how will these ammunitions compare in terms of accuracy? Let's see if we can put that to the test. I've got a target set up and I'll shoot this from 100 yards and I'll fire from the prone unsupported position. I'm going to be using my Colt AR-15A2 which has a true 5.56 NATO chamber, a 20 inch barrel and a 1 in 7 rifling twist. And I'm going to start with the PMC 62 grain ammunition. Now we have to take into account that this is not the ammunition I used to zero this rifle. So the group might be off from center a little bit but we really want to see the size of the group. I have the shot holes covered with yellow pasties so they're a little easier to see and this group is not bad. But now I have my A2 loaded with the IMI 62 grain ammunition and I'll shoot this from 100 yards and let's see how the groups compare. So we see our PMC 62 grain ammunition marked with the yellow pasties and now our IMI 62 grain ammunition marked with the green pasties. Is the PMC ammunition any more accurate? Maybe, a little bit. Is there really enough difference to make a difference? Maybe, a little bit. Now I have a new target set up and we'll try our heavier projectiles. I have my A2 loaded with the Hornady 223 Remington 75 grain boat tail hollow point. Let's see what kind of group I can get with this.
And I have the shot holes from our Hornady 223 ammunition covered with the yellow pasties. Now you'll hear people say that if you shoot true 223 ammunition through a rifle with a true 556 chamber that you'll lose accuracy. And that can be correct sometimes, but not all of the time. But now I have my A2 rifle loaded with our IMI 556 NATO 77 grain boat tail hollow point. And I'll shoot this from 100 yards and we'll see how the groups compare. And now we see our group with the Hornady ammunition covered with the yellow pasties and our group with the IMI ammunition covered with the green pasties. We see a point of impact shift from one type of ammunition to the other and that's not really surprising. But we also see that the IMI group is not as good as the Hornady group. Now is there enough difference to make a difference? Yes, sometimes. Something to point out before we go to the next segment. You may have noticed that in the accuracy comparison I did not shoot the Remington 77 grain ammunition. There's a reason for that. I'm out. Right now you might be able to go to stores and find 223 or 556 NATO ammo, but finding really specific types for comparison purposes can be difficult. We just have to play the hand we're dealt. But let's move on to something else. So let's do a couple of things to compare the effectiveness of these different ammunitions. I've got two concrete blocks set up and I'll shoot these from 50 yards. And I'll shoot the target on your left with the IMI 62 grain steel core penetrator and the target on your right with the PMC 62 grain steel core penetrator. And we'll see how they compare. So both of these ammunitions made pretty short work of these cinder blocks. Looks like the IMI was significantly better. In fact, it was so much better it makes me suspect that block may have had a defect. So I've got a new block set up. I'll shoot this from 50 yards with the IMI. Let's see how the results compare. And after shooting our second cinder block, from where I was standing, it looked like the results were consistent. So did the IMI outperform the PMC? You be the judge. Now let's compare the effectiveness of our hollow point projectiles. And to do that, we're going to use the meat target. For those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather jacket skin followed by pork chop pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of lab coat on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high tech fleece bullet stop. And I got the lab coat out of the recycle bin at work. Don't read anything into it. So now I've got my A2 loaded with the Hornady 223 Remington 75 grain boat tail hollow point, and I'll shoot from 25 yards. In shooting targets like this with 556 or 223 hollow points, the result that I frequently get is a lot of damage to the front of the target and then decreasing damage as the projectiles go through, but very little damage to the back of the target. But with our 75 grain projectiles, we see a little bit different result. 
Our pork chop pectorals just have 223 holes in them, very little expansion. Our ribs on the front of the target were seeing some expansion, and where the projectiles hit ribs shattered them. But when we get to our orange lung tissue, there's a lot of damage, a lot of orange puree. Now the ribs on the back of the target, unfortunately only one projectile hit these ribs, but you can see a lot of damage. As far as penetration, the bullets all lost their jackets, and some of those jackets were stopped by the lab coat on the back of the target. One of the projectiles was stopped by the lab coat on the back of the target. One made it through to about the 30th layer of fleece, and a couple of them went completely through the 48 layers of fleece bullet stop. Let's take a look at what I recovered. And here's what I recovered. Some jackets, some bullet fragments. Here's one of the projectiles, and we see a great deal of expansion and a lot of fragmentation. Now I've set up a new meat target, and I'm loaded with the IMI 77 grain bow tail hollow point, and I'll shoot this from 25 yards, and we'll see how we do. So with our IMI 77 grain hollow points, we see that in our pork chop pectorals, virtually no expansion, just five, five, six holes. Our ribs on the front of the target were starting to see a little bit of expansion where the projectiles hit ribs, shattered them. In our orange lung tissue, we see a lot of damage, a lot of orange puree. And the ribs on the back of the target, this time they were hit by a few projectiles. We see a lot of damage here. And with our Hornady ammunition, we had one that just hit the edge. You see that with this one that just hit the edge, very similar damage. We also see very similar penetration into our fleece bullet stop. But let's take a look at these projectiles now. And here's what I was able to recover. And we see that the projectiles lost their jackets, and there's a lot of expansion and a lot of fragmentation. So the takeaways from all of this. We saw that the IMI ammunition had just a little more velocity than the other types of ammunition. Enough more to matter, debatable. We also saw that the IMI seemed to be a little less accurate than the other types of ammunition. Again, enough less to matter, depending on what you're doing, debatable. However, in shooting both the cinder blocks and the meat target, it appeared that the IMI ammunition may have been a little more effective. Again, enough more to matter, still debatable. But the real bottom line for me is that my A2 is zeroed with Federal American Eagle 556 NATO 55 grain full metal jacket spear point. And when I switch to the Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point, the two ammunitions hit in the same place. That is not indicative that your rifle will get the same results, but that means if the question were asked to me, is the IMI ammunition the right ammo for me, the answer is no. Is it the right ammo for you? You be the judge. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the IMI 62 grain and 77 grain video.